So now is when uh, Nilesh distances himself from my remarks and gives you a product demo. Thank you, Chandler. Um, you know, I think WebAssembly, it was hard work, but we felt it was totally worth it. We now love WebAssembly. Uh, we have stood on the shoulders of some pretty great communities around Istio, Envoy, and Solo. So uh, you know, we, we were able to actually kind of get to a point where we we're happy uh, shipping this for customers uh, who are running it you know, in pretty much all versions starting from 1.5. So I wanted to quickly show you how does our end product look like and uh, in terms of delivering some of our promises and in, in getting kind of deep visibility in your services. So this is uh, our UI. Um, so we have WebAssembly filter that ships samples to our uh, local data processing pods, which kind of convert those into some metadata and that powers our dashboard. So this is the end result of it. Uh, we have our own sandbox showing a bunch of services. Uh, right now you're just seeing a list of all the services in our cluster. Um, I mean, this so far might look very similar to um, a dashboard you might see on Istio. There are a couple of differences I would point out. One is that a lot of our customers want some kind of cataloging capabilities where they can actually curate a lot of content around this. Uh, people want to tag uh, the services with teams and owners, uh, add run books, wiki pages, basically use some kind of a central database to get all kinds of information in about the services. So we have built some cataloging capabilities here and then a lot of our customers want to get a lot of external tool signals about the services into a central place. Here you can see uh, a CI integration that tells us when was a service last deployed. And we also get in you know, alerts, events from tools like your Sentry and PageDuty and other kind of DevOps tools you might be using to get like a central place where you can see all your problems in your services uh, from of multiple tools. Uh, this is kind of the same view graphically, which is basically Kiali, uh, except that this kind of like plugs into some of our detailed views. Um, like in the future, if Kiali has um, an API that lets us actually build applications on top of it, we'd love to kind of you know, bank on those. But for today, we have something that uh, displays this, where that can hook up to the rest of our app. Uh, the other difference here is you would see, so since we look at the data layer, we can actually go slightly deeper in terms of understanding dependencies. Like here you are seeing a service that's writing to a specific Kafka topic, uh, product payment action, and then someone else reading from it. So a lot of this asynchronous dependencies through either cache, caches or queues or or even databases, uh, we're able to kind of highlight those uh, based on kind of understanding the data. Uh, a lot of our customers have have dependency graphs, which are, you know, pretty much driven through asynchronous computations, and uh, they, you know, they really want this kind of dependency graph that can take you through some of your asynchronous edges as well, uh, and then. We um, highlight services where any of the, you know, our own system or third-party uh, integrations might indicate an alert. So let me actually go deeper into a service. And now here you would start seeing kind of the differences in terms of how detailed we can go in terms of uh, observability. So first you would notice endpoints. Uh, the are like points that we have discovered based on some clustering of all the requests and responses, um, including an endpoint uh, that has uh, some kind of URL pattern. And then we are able to kind of show throughput and latencies uh, segmented by your endpoints. Uh, we have an activity feed that can tell you what's happening to the service. Uh, and we pull in kind of events from um, tools like PagerDuty, CI, 
Kubernetes. Uh, we can tell you an overall health status from kind of multiple sources and kind of local dependency graph. Uh, here it says that the throughput and latency looks fine, but there's an anomaly in the data itself. Um, so let me actually click to this endpoint. So first of all, you would see that this endpoint, we are able to look, pull out the entire schema of how the requests look like, uh, including kind of the structure in it, the field names, the types, uh, and what kind of personal data is attached to each type. So it's a pretty deep API spec of what this endpoint provides, uh, what kind of responses it gives, and what is the structure of the responses. Uh, we are able to actually go and look at metrics around each data element. Here, there's one element that's red. And if I look at it, there's a uniqueness metric. Uh, so emails were kind of generally pretty unique. And then it has dropped down to zero, which means you know you are basically seeing the exact same email. It probably means it's like null or empty string. Um, and we've detected this, this anomaly at a data level, which you're flagging out. So these are kind of like deep insights. We're able to kind of pull purely out of the box with like, you know, using our Istio as the, the backbone. Uh, and we do have detected authorization based on the beer, to beer token here. So this kind of tells you uh, some of the capability of what we built. And then let me quickly show you another example, uh, which is, Uh, a cloud service. So here there's an endpoint which has a classic um, kind of HTTP error. And if I look, go into it and I, I can see here that this used to return 200, so now it has started returning 500s. Uh, so what we can do is we can actually overlay events, uh, events that include deployments, changes in other services, page duty alerts. And we can rank them by their correlation to this incident and can rank order them. And here it says that the most likely event is um, a schema change. Uh, and if I actually look at this event number one, it shows me that um, the requests have changed the schema and there are two new fields added. And that correlates perfectly with the findings you're seeing. So it makes it very easy to understand why you are seeing something anomalous. Um, and even if that change came from some downstream service, um, you get this kind of visibility here. So you can go and uh, look at the dependency upstream that caused it. Uh, you can go to that service. You can look at the owner of that and maybe contact that uh, person. Um, that is a kind of worldwide venture of the product. Um, let me go get back to the slides. So yeah, that's our demo. Uh, you can try it out uh, uh, if you are running an Istio cluster and would love to see if you have any questions around either our WebAssembly or the demo.